you, Chairman Seiler and members of the Judiciary Committee. My name is Hallie Hamilton, and I'm a representative of Nebraska Family Alliance. And just first, I want to thank Senator Chambers for the way that he has framed the conversation that we've been having today on a very difficult issue. Nebraska Family and Nebraska Family Alliance, we echo the concerns of the many qualified individuals who have already testified today. Legalizing doctor-prescribed suicide endangers the weak and vulnerable, corrupts the practice of medicine, betrays human dignity, compromises equality before the law, and promotes the view that the elderly and disabled are not people to be loved, but burdens to be managed. This form of suicide, one where a doctor gives a prescription to a patient and friends and family members are perhaps notified, is often considered only in the vacuum of personal choice. But this is a bad solution for the wrong problem. Here are the real problems faced in the end of life that are not solved by a poisonous pill. Our written official end of life directives being ignored by well-meaning nurses and doctors? That's a problem. Our terminally ill patients being denied access to medications that could truly alleviate their pain in their last days? That's a problem. When the ill and elderly are no longer able to be contributing members of society or help with the dishes or take themselves to the bathroom or cook their own food, do they feel abandoned by their friends, family, and country? That's a problem. Are people ill-equipped to make informed end-of-life decisions about potential treatments, hospice care, and palliative care? That's a problem. The National Center on Elder Abuse reports that a recent major study indicated that 7 to 10 percent of the elderly in that study had experienced abuse in the past year, and only 1 in 14 cases of elder abuse ever comes to the attention of the authorities. That is a problem. Doctors Leon Cass and Eric Cohen were right when they said, how we age and die are not only private matters. Our communal practices and social policies shape the environments in which aging and caregiving take place, not only in moments of crisis when life or death decisions need to be made, but in the long days of struggle and everyday attendance. Instead of doubling down on the woefully poor treatment that people have experienced under current laws and systems, by beginning to consider a prescription for suicide, a medical treatment, we should, remain, we should reclaim true compassion, true dignity, and true honor for the terminally ill and elderly. Thank you for your time.